Good morning, family and friends. This is Minister Mary. I've been away for a while trying to get my computer together, but finally I got it together. So I'm back. I have a message this morning about the door. And this is in John chapter 10. Um, it talks about Jesus being the true shepherd. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and lead them out. And when he bring out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice, yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. The disciples didn't understand the parable, so Jesus, um, repeated the, the parable again to them. He said, again, he said, most assuredly, I say to you, he said, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I come that I can give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. And this was John chapter 10 to verses 1 to 9 and this was from the new king james version i would like to say a prayer for those that are listening and for those that we hear later father god i come to you in the mighty name of jesus giving you all the honor and all the praise and glorifying your name because you are god and you're god all by yourself and lord i just want to thank you for um letting me give this message this morning father god i just want to give you honor and give you praise and glorify your name in the mighty name of jesus Lord, letting your people know that Jesus is the door and that he is the only way to you, the Father. And Lord, I just thank you. I, I thank you for this message, Father God. I thank you for all of those that are listening, Father God, and that will listen later on. And Lord, hoping that they can pass the word on, Father God, in the name of Jesus and Lord, all the honor and all the praise is yours, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm, okay, let me get my let me get my my uh, message together. Okay. My title is The Door That Leads to Eternal Life. The only true God turns out to be the one who need nothing from us and instead love us so much that he gave his only son. John 3:16 God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Also in, in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, 
the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the door for eternal life, as well as the one shepherd who leads the sheep. Jesus is telling us that he is the only way to the Father. There is no other way by which we must be saved. There is no other way by which we must be saved but Jesus. In Mark um, chapter 16, verse 15, this is why Jesus, this is why Jesus said this in Mark. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. So God has put his gospel out in all the world. It is to be preached to all nations. No one is to, to not hear the gospel, the good news about Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus, oh my goodness, Jesus Christ. Also in Matthew chapter 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. It's clear that salvation is dependent on Christ alone. God wants no one to perish, but to have everlasting life. That is why Jesus came into this world. The gospel must be preached to everyone. It's up to that person to accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior of his life. God does not force himself on anyone. That is why we have free will to choose. But do not forget how much God loves us. The reason Jesus came into the world and laid down his life was for us. Because he loved us just that much. I remember um, a person that I used to work with um, a while back. She said to me, she said, um, how can you still have faith when you lost your mom and your dad right behind each other? And I told, I told her, I still, I still have faith. I have faith in God. And see what, uh, people don't know is that when you're in relationship with God, mm, God reveal things to you. And you know that if your mom and your dad had relationship with God, that they were believers and had Jesus as the Lord of their life, you know that they are happy, that they are with God, and that they are all right. As long as they're with God, they are all right. You don't have to worry about them. You're going to miss them, of course, because they've been a part of your life. You always miss your loved ones when they leave this world. But just to know that God is still on the throne and that God is in charge and that they are with God. That answers that's that answers your faith. Mm. Jesus took our place. His life stood in the gap for all of us who believe on him. What Jesus did for us was so powerful 
it was so great because he was the only one who could pay the price that was needed to be paid for us. He became the only way to the Father. He didn't just stand in the gap. He bridged the gap forever. In Hebrew chapter 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the Father. Praise be to God. Thank you, God. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Think about this. Jesus already had a place with the father he already heard he had already heard the words you are my beloved son in whom i am well pleased but what he didn't have yet was when jesus endured the cross and despised the shame it was because of the joy that was set before him relationship with us was his joy that is why the joy of the lord is our strength fulfilling his joy is being in relationship with him and then with one another jesus had us on his mind when he went through all that he went through to fully pay the price for our redemption. He had us on his mind. From generations to generations to generations, Jesus had us on his mind. Family, I want to thank you for uh, listening to this message. And I hope that it touched someone's heart. And I would like to say a prayer. Father God, I just want to thank you for this message, Father God, and hoping that it reaches someone's heart, Father God, and give them a better understanding of just who Jesus is. That he is the door and that he is the only way to you and father god i just want to thank you for the knowledge and revelation that you give me father god in the name of jesus i just give you honor and give you praise and glorify your name and lord i'm asking that you throw your love and arm protection around my family father god my children my grandchildren my sisters and brothers, cousins, nieces, nephews, my aunts. And Lord, I just ask, Lord, that you keep them all safe, Father God, and guide them all to you. And my friends and your children all over the world, Father God. We don't want to leave anybody out. Your children all over the world, Father God. The intercessory prayer warriors, Father God. Those that are on the field, Father God. Missionaries, Father God. The evangelists, Father God. And our pastors, Father God. Lord, all the ministers, Father God. Everyone that is fighting for the kingdom of God. Asking, Lord, that you keep them all safe and bless them, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Father God, for this message. Thank you, God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, family and friends. I hope you all have a wonderful morning and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.